The following is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the iRacing Esports Network, proudly presented tonight by V8s Online. We are here for the iRacing V8 Supercars official championship at the Autodromo Nazionale Monza, where we have 23 action-packed uh, laps coming up for you in these beautiful V8 supercars. And what a race it's going to be. We have an absolutely packed out grid tonight of 25 of the best drivers that you will find in these V8 supercars. They're fresh from practice yesterday in the V8 Scop series where most of these drivers took in participation yesterday. So it is going to be an absolute ripper tonight. My name is Zach Hanlon and joining me in the box tonight is Cameron Dance and Jake Kennedy on the TV screens for you tonight. And Cam, we're going to have a look now at the championship standings and it seems like uh, Sam Blacklock, who is with us tonight, is the man to catch at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Sam's up the point in, but he's not too far ahead of Brett Loxon, who's in second. Only 63 points adrift of him, followed by Wayne Burke in third, who is 173 points adrift of Sam Blacklock. Forza and Arby not too far behind as well on 310. That's probably going to be a little bit more of a challenge to try and win the championship from there. But then we go back to John Ross, who's four points behind Forza and, and then Jared Philsell, who's 370 behind Sam. But we are yet to see him actually appear again for the rest of the season. So we may see him make a cameo appearance in the next race or two. He's not here tonight, unfortunately. So I don't think he's going to be getting any more points at this stage but we'll see what happens brady myers is in the seventh on 1083 points brian borg in eighth on 1037 riley by seven points behind brian borg in ninth and then we go back to jane mcknight in tenth on 998 points yeah so it's a very interesting championship right now and um, when we're looking at that table something we have to consider as well is those are the eight best rounded count, uh, counted rounds, pardon me, of all of those drivers so far. And there are still two races after this one to go. So um, we have drop rounds as well. So if guys can improve, uh, or ladies as well, if they can improve on some of the poorer races they've had throughout the season, that point tally can increase quite dramatically. And uh, Forzan El Nabi, Wayne Burke, and Brett Loxton are definitely the four to watch out for as they try to make themselves to the top of the championship standings and catch Sam Blacklock, who is currently up there. But uh, right now, we are in the qualifying session, and at the moment, Jake Burton is looking very strong. He's got a four tenth of a second nearly advantage over Dane Warren and Wayne Burke in third. And uh, as I was saying before, these guys are very well in practice from yesterday, had a much longer race, but the track temperature tonight is 41 degrees. And uh, as most of us iRacers will know, 
That is very hot, and in these lock diff V8 supercars, it's going to be very difficult to lock down that traction and make sure that you get the great exits that you need, which are oh so critical at this Monza circuit. And a uh, couple of drivers have completed their second laps and uh, some are starting theirs, but most people look to have set a time now. And uh, it's looking pretty tight up at the uh, up at the front of the field here. Yeah, absolutely. Burn currently about roughly three tenths clear of Dane Warren, who's sitting second. And then you go back to the likes of Wayne Burke and then Ryan O'Sullivan, Josh Muggleton, Sam Blackrock. Our championship leader will be down sixth. So it's fairly compact throughout the field. There's about a second roughly between first and 15th. So fairly compacted and pretty much from fourth all the way down to about just outside the top 20 is fairly close within a second so it's going to be all about the draft and maximizing saving your tires in these hot conditions and saving fuel as well so you can have as short as possible pit stop with them needing to do at least one pit stop tonight yeah that's exactly right they do have a 60 percent fuel limit in the cars tonight which will mean that they can take more than no, no more than 67.2 liters of fuel as they grid up for this race and uh, they'll use a little bit of that as they're trying to get off the starting line as well there's a good point that you raised cam the draft tonight is going to be so critical for so many of these drivers uh circuit monza obviously is one of the most high speed circuits that you will ever go to the straights are very long and most of the corners are of reasonably high speed as well and uh, a lot of drivers are going to be looking to use that draft or that slipstream to their advantage to as you said save fuel um, or also it really does ramp up the opportunities for overtaking and uh, the best opportunity for overtaking tonight i believe is probably going to be in turn one that's where we generally see most of uh, the overtakes in all of the racing series but uh, there are also many other good spots around this circuit that you can overtake at but we will take you through our grid now and Jake Burton with his first lap, a very nice job there. 149.586, we'll see him starting from the front of the grid tonight, followed closely by Dane Warren. Forzan El Nabi, one of our other championship contenders, is going to line up beside Wayne Burke. They're going to line up on row number two. Rhino Sullivan, good to see another appearance from him this season. Showed some good running early in the series and uh, has had a few rounds off so good to see ryan he'll start out of five and same goes for muggleton as well has shown some good performances uh although only a few sam blacklock he's gonna have to do a lot tonight out of seventh to uh claw back to forzan el nabi and wayne burke brett loxton as well starting from eighth brady myers starts from ninth and corey preston rounds out your top ten in 11th, we have Ross Rizzo, and lining up beside him will be Chris Cox. Cooper Webster will be in 13th, followed by Thomas McMillan in 14th. 15th goes to Michael Talianczyk with Jordan Ross in 16th. Sam Sutton all the way back in 17th. Not probably the place he wants to be, but we'll see him probably move through the field. 18th goes to Steve Jansen with Greg Sharp in 19th. And rounding out the top 20, which from 11th to 20th is actually separated by less than a second. So, going to be very close rounding at the top 20 will be David Kinman. Yes, then we have Thomas, uh, sorry, we have Martin Silvassi in 21st, Thomas Hins 22nd, Emily Jones uh, racing all the way from Japan tonight in 23rd, David Miller in 24th, and Mitchell McLeod, unable to set a time, will round out this 25 car grid for you tonight, as it appears that we have most of the cars gridded up on this very long home straight at. Uh, Autodrama Nazionale Monza as the revs rise and we get ready for 25 V8 supercars to go. They are off. Good start there from Jake Burton. Didn't get much wheel spin off the line. He's going to have it down into turn number one. Back in the field, there's a little bit of jostling, but Burton has done a great job there to get into the first corner nice and cleanly. Wayne Burke having a bit of a look down the inside of Ryan O'Sullivan. Sully going to try and come back down on the inside, not able to do it. The two TTR cars of Muggleton and Blacklock almost uh, getting together there, having to check each other up a bit. But it looks like we've got a very clean start tonight. A few little rubs, I think. Cooper Webster's got a bit of damage, and Wayne Burke is also 
had to uh, slow down as well. So a minor incident there, but a fairly clean getaway here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's pretty much made it to the first turns fairly cleanly. You've obviously seen Kip Webster with a little bit of that damaged route, so no longer a Commodore, but uh, I'm sure you'll be able to keep soldiering on and Wayne Brute with the slow down. But for the most part, everybody else has made it fairly straightforward start and made it through. Yeah, now you can see already Dane Warren is very eager to make a break with Jake Burton up the front here. They've already got themselves a little bit of a gap now over Forzan El Nabi, but he's still definitely within that draft range. And they've pulled a little more on Ryan O'Sullivan too, as uh, Josh Muggleton runs very deep into the Ascari chicane there. And that's going to affect the exit out of that corner, which he'll so desperately want. And uh, wouldn't be surprised to see Muggleton helping out his teammate in Blacklock, but Sam Sutton has uh, a little bit of contact with McMillan there, and they're now going three wide as they come down into the Parabolica. Who's going to be the bravest on the brakes and who's going to be sensible? It looks like they all managed to sort themselves out relatively well. Thomas Hins having to run around that outside line there. Greg Sharp making nice moves there on Chris Oxhead. And We've also just noticed as well, Jordan Ross, while these guys are battling, has dived into the pit lanes. We'll get a report on that for you shortly. But uh, Chris Coxhead now pushing Thomas McMillan as they come into turn number one. But Greg Sharp's going to stay on the inside there. And Thomas Hins also trying to make that move on Coxhead as he decided to bail out of the move at turn one. Sam Sutton just getting a little bit taily as they come out of the first corner too. But these guys are probably going to want to settle themselves down and just get in the keep in that little bit of a train because McMillan's starting to fall off Corey Preston already and they'll really be wanting to uh, keep in that draft. Yeah, absolutely. The moment you lose that draft is the moment where you're going to struggle to catch back up. So that's the last thing they're going to do. And I've ju actually just found out what the reason for the penalty for Ross was. And it was actually because he jumped the start. Oh, that's uh, never good to do, but it is so easy to just get a little eager on that clutch pedal and just let it slip that even that one percent too much and you just creep over the line a little bit and uh that's very unfortunate for him because he's been putting in some great performances all throughout this series almost won by uh lost actually by two hundredths of a second last time out when we we're at daytona so he's gonna have a lot of work to do but meanwhile at the front jake burton is still your race leader. And uh, Forzan El Nabi has managed to recover a little bit of that gap that uh, the two cars out in front had gained on him. And he's now definitely well within striking distance of both those cars. Rhino Sullivan now is the man with a little bit of work to do. And as you were saying, Cam, once you get out of that draft, it's a massive advantage that you lose having uh, not having that slipstream effect. And uh, so he's going to have to do a lot of work to get back in and help pull himself back up. But meanwhile, the pack with... Uh, uh, we'll just actually go back up to the front because there is a change for the lead as uh, Dane Warren decides to send it up the inside of Jake Burton into turn number one. We'll get a replay of that for you. And uh, as we'll be able to see very shortly... Just a lot of overspeed there for Dane Warren and just allowed him to come right up on side on the inside of Jake Burton there and a very nice clean move indeed and uh, now that might allow Jake to do a little bit of fuel saving and uh, play a little more strategy for the rest of the race but we are back now with you live and uh, the battle for the Cricks Coxhead Thomas Hins, Greg Sharp and David Kinman as we just went to that replay was heating up they were going two by two by two down the uh, front straight once again and uh, this little battle pack here uh, really seems to be the one with uh, the most fighting at the moment yeah absolutely there's all sorts going on through the field good move by Dane to move into the lead there up the inside of Burton at turn one but this pack through the back in the field is all on with all sorts going on and Kinman's looking at a move on Sharp at the moment. Yeah, Kinman actually just got through on Sharp and uh, Greg Sharp's actually had to give up to Sam Sutton as well. But a very nice uh, run coming out of the second Lesmo there and was able to use the draft to uh, pull himself up alongside. Just behind them though, Mitchell McLeod, who started dead last in this race, is starting to progress himself forward and uh, he's now trying to look around the outside of... Uh, 
believe that's Steve Jansen and looks like he's going to make that work. But meanwhile, back up at the front, it is on again for the lead. And it looks like Jake Burton is just going to slide himself. A little bit of a rub with a little bit of overrun there as they uh, came through. But no harm, no foul. Jake Burton gets through and gets the lead once again. But that has allowed... Uh, Ryan O'Sullivan to come back up on this group as well as Muggleton and Blacklock so um, wouldn't be too far-fetched to believe that Jake actually might want to just slightly control the pace of this race uh, to try and help his teammate in Blacklock to catch up to his competitors who are Fawzan El Nabi uh, well Fawzan El Nabi is actually the only really remaining competitor he has to worry about up front but nonetheless those Championship points are very important. Everyone counts, so uh, we may see him. We may see Jake just holding up the pace to allow Sam to come through, but we will have to see as the race progresses. But as we can see now, this little lead pack that they had going for three cars is now turned into a train of uh, all the way back to 10th place where Wayne Burke is sitting. And with that pace that we saw from Wayne in qualifying, wouldn't be surprised to see him coming through that pack as well either. Yeah, absolutely. It's all that battling's just created this massive train. And if they're actually not careful, this could bring that little group of Telling Hitch Webster and Preston into it as well. So this could be all on. But like we've heard in the past as well, there's no team orders at TTR, knock on wood. But We'll see what happens tonight, and those championship points are going to be very, very valuable to Sam, especially. Yeah, and Sam, obviously not uh, a previous champion in this series, would definitely be something for himself to uh, pick up. One of those, as uh, many of us hope to do so one day, and uh, once again, we see into turn number one, Dane Warren firing it down the inside of Jake Burton, and Jake giving Dane a little more... Uh, that time around and opting to try and get a better exit might be looking to have a bit of a go as they come into the second chicane and he does pull to the inside i don't think he quite has the speed to make that work though he pulls back in and uh will have to try somewhere else but turn one is really a best opportunity for someone making a mistake and it is very easy to make a mistake around monza I can't tell you the uh, amount of laps that I've done around this place and the amount of laps that I was probably genuinely happy with. I could probably only count them on two hands. So very difficult track and one mistake is so, you know, it's not only so easy to do, but it can cause you such a loss of time as well. Even if you just get a bit of a bad run coming through a scary or something, um, you can lose two or even three tenths from that. So very very important not to do so but at the moment everyone seems to be getting through nicely dane warren just running a little deep into ascari there but managing to keep the traction down very nicely as he comes out of the ascari complex and uh everyone just kind of settling into race mode now i think a few people will be doing a bit of fuel saving and uh just looking back at that pack that we were observing before chris coxhead now leads that pack ahead of thomas hins and uh, David Kinman and Sam Sutton, they were sitting a little further back previously. They've managed to recover a bit of that gap and uh, we might see something happening uh, as we come into turn one. But uh, up at the head of the field, for once, there's no lead change and uh, Jake Burton is going to have to stay tucked in and maybe he's uh, deciding to uh, change his strategy up a bit here. Yeah, that's probably the case for a lot of these guys inside the top 10 is just starting to be a little bit more patient and starting to save the fuel, save the tyres and just think about the long-term effect rather than trying to push and get that position for short-term gain. Yeah, because you can lose so much uh, just, you know, for, for the sake of one spot now, uh, you might be able to save yourself a litre or so worth of fuel and I'm not exact on the specifics of fuel flow filling in uh, these V8 supercars, but... Uh, it's 3.1 litres a second, so that can even gain you uh, three or four tenths of a second, and if you can save a little more than that, you might be able to save close to a second, and right now, a second is going to get you from fourth to first, because uh, Ryan O'Sullivan right now is only 1.079 seconds behind our race leader in Dane Warren, so saving that bit of fuel behind may be able to do quite a lot for you, and... Uh, 
Jake Burton and Force Handle Narby actually. Trick Sim Sports are usually pretty handy with their fuel. They do have uh, one of the great fuel savers, Ross Rizzo, in their team. And now we have a bit of a look. Two teammates going side by side. This is for position number five as they come into the Parabolica. And Sam Blacklock is going to move himself past his TTR teammate in uh, Josh Muggleton there. And Brett Loxton even looking like he might want to have a bit of a go. But unfortunately, he just gets a little bit crossed up halfway through that corner and might not be able to do anything with it. But now Sam is uh, going to have to watch out because Josh has got a really good run on him. And uh, looks like Josh is actually going to help out his old mate there and uh, give him a bit of a bump draft as they come down into turn one but uh, Brett Loxton is going to try and capitalize on that very very tight squeeze there into turn one but Josh Muggleton does an excellent job to defend that position and uh, Brett Loxton will have to wait for another small opportunity like that before he can do anything yeah absolutely and that all started from that move at Parabolica that corner's not necessarily a corner you want to be making moves on as you can tell because Sam's lost quite a bit of gap to uh, the car here of I believe that is Ryan O'Sullivan so that's how much difference it can make making a move that isn't necessarily ideal it did work but it's cost them that sort of time oh Loxton's had contact with Myers oh, yeah Loxton's uh, just had a bit of a half spin there and uh, kind of almost collected Brady Myers and Wayne Burke as they came through very very lucky for those guys that nothing too substantial eventuated out of that but i'm um, actually just having a look at that on the replay it looks like brady myers actually just did give a bit of a bump there to brett as they were coming through uh, lesmo one brady got a nicer run out of the second chicane and uh was able to pull a bit of a move but uh brett loxton just not quite uh, able to hold it around the outside there, but we'll down, dive now down to uh, David Kinman and Mitchell McLeod because they are still fighting it out. And David Kinman doing a nice job to uh, retain that position for the time being, but he's looking a little uncomfortable with that car. He's also got a little bit of damage on it. And uh, he does have Mitchell McLeod who started at the rear of the pack, who we know is a good driver in these V8 supercars as uh, Steve Janssen just pulls out and uh, goes for a little bit of a move on Martin Silvassi there. And we'll see if these guys lose as much time as the two TTR teammates did. Doesn't seem like they, they're going to. They're still going to be well within that draft. And uh, Emily Jones just having a bit of a look around behind them as well. Good move there by Janssen, but uh, I think David Kimmon's been putting in some good performances again this season, but uh, I just feel that with that damage and the way his car's looking right now, the pass from Mitchell McLeod is uh, inevitable more than anything, but <laughs> Emily Jones just in the background there, almost uh, coming together with Mark Silvassi. But uh, we're just going to head back up to the, fi at the front of the field because Wayne Burke and Brady Myers have had a coming together and we will get a cut price cutting parts replay of that for you. And uh, Wayne Burke going for the move. Brady tried to run him almost onto the grass as they came into the second chicane there. Wayne went very deep under brakes as they both did and uh, Brady trying to hold it around the outside and I mean there was a there was about a car with room and I think maybe Wayne wasn't expecting him to follow him around the outside and uh, coming together for those guys. So more work to do for Wayne Burke after starting P4 has it all to do but uh, it's all starting to kick off back in the field back with Mitchell McLeod now as he goes for the move on Steve Yance, on David Kinman and Steve Jansen's going to try and go around the outside of Kinman that gives him a better line coming through the second part of Ascari and he's done a very good job to make it through there so Mitchell McLeod now moves into uh, what I believe is position number uh, 16 and he will have a long way to go, though, to catch up to those ahead of him. Meanwhile, we have Rizzo and Loxton side by side as they come down into turn one. And Loxton's actually got himself up next to Brady Myers. He's going to send it down into turn one. The rear of that Holden Commodore of Loxton just skipping as he tries to use as much braking pressure as he can, but not quite able to make the pass happen. Brady Myers doing a great job to defend that position, but Ross Rizzo now is very, very handy behind these two guys and he's just waiting for an opportunity to get by. But 
Looks like they're all going to be pretty sensible through this uh, second chicane here. As, uh, as we've been saying, one spot can uh, lose you a few seconds to your competitors ahead, and that's not what you want to do around this Monza circuit. No, absolutely. And we know Ross is a very, very smart driver. He's very consistent, knows what he's doing, knows how to play the game. So we should see him move up possibly a few stops when the pit stops come around. As we all know that those Trick Sim Sports boys are very, very strategic. So we'll see what happens. But he's now right in behind and Brett Locks and then I'm sure he'll be able to get a move. And Brady Moss has actually gapped those two. So he's probably going to have to make a move at some stage if Loxton continues to hold him up. Yeah, and uh, Loxton, of course, sporting a little bit of damage from the last few laps, having a little bit of contact with a few cars there. But um, we'll take you back to the battle for the lead. And as we can see, just looking at this lead train, it does look like Josh Muggleton has uh, died off a little bit from the back of that train. He's all out in no man's land. He doesn't have a draft for himself, and he's not giving anyone else a draft either. So he's going to have to hope for a bit of battling up ahead if he's hoping to promote himself into the top five. Right now, he's just uh, holding gunner station, but now Jake Burton has decided that it is time to stop saving fuel and go for the lead. But Dane Warren doesn't want to have a bar of it. He's rubbing the rear of that TTR Commodore there, and he's going to probably, he's got a very nice run coming out of the exit of the turn one and two complex. And I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for a bit of a move as they are bump drafting down into the second chicane and even a little bit of a bump there. Are they going to be able to pull it up? Jake Burton just squirreling under brakes as he's pushed along by Dane Warren there. Amazingly, they both make the corner and uh, still all four wheels on the tarmac for both of those cars. So getting very aggressive up at the lead of this race here. And it's, um, you know, nothing surprising from Dane Warren. Every time we see him out on the track, it is nothing but maximum attack. But where he has fallen down is in the pit stops as both the leaders there got very wide coming out of the second Lesmo and just getting a little bit sideways. And uh, luckily, El Nabi not too close, not able to make anything out of that. But these two guys right now are on maximum aggression and uh, Dane Warren definitely wants to hold that lead for whatever reason. Yeah, absolutely. We know both Dane and Jake have very, very hard races. They don't, they try to not to give you an inch, but they try to be fierce. So we'll see how this battle progresses. But Dane should be able to, if he's clever enough, pull a move off, sit behind, or pull a move off later on and just sit behind for the moment. So, or oh, he got a little bit silent. He should be coming up the same with Forzan. Yeah, so. Pit lane at the all the time. Yeah, the first of our leaders have started to pit. So Jake Burton now has a uh, pretty big decision to make as to how far longer he wants to run. Of course, we will be seeing all cars take tires as they can change the tires while they are refueling in these pits. But as they are pitting, Ross Rizzo and Brett Loxton side by side once again. But this time, Ross is able to make it through uh, on Loxton there. And Loxton almost just giving him a little bit of a as they uh, came out of the first chicane there. So nice job by Ross Rizzo. And we've seen some alternate strategies from Ross throughout the past in this uh, Viet Supercars official series. So we will see how long he decides to run. He's going to come in the next lap or uh, run a few extra. But Rhino Sullivan also stayed out. Um, and he's actually quite close uh, to Jake Burton. But meanwhile, in the pits, Forzan El Nabi has come out ahead of Dane Warren. So that's going to be very uh, tricky. In fact, uh, Sam Blacklock's also come out. So as I said, Dane Warren is always on maximum attack when we see him drive. But his fall down is usually in the pits. And once again, it does seem as if that is the case. I'm just having a look at our pit stop times now. And yeah, Dane Warren, three seconds sitting longer in the pit lane than any of his major competitors around. So he's going to have a monster load worth of work to do to uh, retain or, or to claw back some of that gap because we've seen most of these guys lapping within a few tenths of a second each lap. And he's just flat out lost three seconds in that pit stop. Yeah, that's very, very odd. I'm not sure if he took too much fuel. Everybody else took too little fuel, but now O'Sullivan and Burton are in, so 
This is going to be very interesting. Burnett was actually fully locked up in heading in towards the line, so he pulled that up very, very well. But this will be very, very interesting to see where they come out in relation to their competitors, Blacklock and those sort of guys. And of course, the uh, guys who pitted the lap earlier are probably going to have a little bit more of an advantage. They have a lot of speed coming down into turn one, but the uh, pit lane exit does give you the inside of the corner. So we will eagerly await and see where our leaders are coming through now as a uh, few cars still filing themselves into the pit lane. So Forzan El Nabi now is coming down the straight and Jake Burton just coming out of the pits. They're going to clear them easy peasy. So uh, guys who pitted earlier make the... Uh, make the good call and even dane warren who sat in the pit so much longer is going to make it past jake burton and rhino sullivan as well and sully's also going to have to defend from josh muggleton but unable to do so muggleton just had too much speed at the end of the straight there and managed to pull himself ahead of the ert machine at uh, at the final notice so nice job from him but now Burton has a lot to do because he's got a fairly, it's not a significant gap up to Dane. Both look like uh, they're still within draft distance of each other. In fact, uh, they are barely just within draft distance of each other. And Dane is barely within draft distance of the two cars up ahead. So they can still claw back that gap, but uh, they've got a little bit, bit of work to do right now. And it's very critical that these guys start to get a move on quite quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing to remember is Burton was actually up front a lot compared to these guys who are in front of him who were actually in the draft the whole time. So possibly burnt a little bit more fuel and had to take a little bit extra compared to those who are ahead of them because of the, that draft effect. So not sure if that was the case or whether he did overfill but we'll see what happens and i'm sure burn who's actually got the overcut at the moment on newer tires it'll be very interesting to see whether he's actually going to have that extra lap different yeah absolutely right but uh muggleton must have had a slowdown as he was coming through the exit of ascari uh because he's had to received two positions one to wayne burke and one to rhino sullivan who he just did such a great job of uh, managing to overtake into turn one so he's going to have a little bit of work to do but blacklock now is having a look for the race lead on forzan el nabi just managing to pull it up as his car skips and forzan electing to uh give a lot of room there and that's allowed dane warren to just catch right back up and Dane now is going to have a fantastic run as they come down into the second chicane. Maybe not quite enough to make anything work. But right now, this is this is go time for Sam Blacklock. These two guys behind are going to fight. He's got a bit of a gap now, and he really needs to make something work. He just runs a little bit deep into the second chicane there as well, and that's lost him a little bit of time. You can see now Dane Warren just trying to, uh, I guess force Forzan El Nabi into a bit of a mistake here and that is all the more allowing Jake Burton to close up that gap as well yeah absolutely it's going to be interesting to see what happens as we get closer and closer to the end of this race and patience is probably going to be something that these guys are going to have to think about because this track with it being the way it is you are not going to want to lead on the last lap especially in the turn one oh. yeah so and Dane Warren there doing move. Yeah, it was a very aggressive move. It's not often, uh, especially in a V8 supercar, that you see someone trying it down the inside of Ascari. But I think Dane Warren knows the severity of the situation that he's gotten himself into. And he is starting to press forward regardless. And Jake Burton is just going to, uh, as I saw him tap the brakes there, and Forza El Nabi pulls out very late as they come into Parabolica. And he's going to try and make something work there, making uh, Dane Warren run a little bit wider than he would have liked. But Forza not quite able to make it work. This is going to be big for Jake Burton, though. He's got now a double draft and might even try and make it three wide as they come into turn one. Although it looks like there's a few ponies under that ASM Commodore, but uh, Burton now fires it down the inside of El Nabi. He's going to do both of them in the one and very nice driving there from Jake Burton. A two for one down into turn number one, passing Dane Warren and Forzan El Nabi. That was a fantastic piece of driving. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful move, textbook stuff by Burton there to get up the inside of both of them into turn one. But now Dane's going to have that draft as they head down towards the second chicane. And Ross going right out 
onto the grass there. So they're absolutely pushing the limit. And Dane's now right up on the tail of Burton, who's on a lap newer tyres, but it doesn't seem to be making all that much difference. Is now they're starting to chase down Sam Blacklock, who's not too far ahead of them. No, well, in these 41 degree track temps, as Dane Warren runs very wide and gets up on two wheels for just a moment, those, uh, those high track temps, they do tend to heat up the tyres quite quickly. And uh, it kind of feels like you only have a couple of good laps on these tyres before, before they kind of sponge off and turn into jelly. But Sam Blacklock now has the advantage and he'll be trying to work his way away from his teammate in Jake Burton and be interesting if Jake maybe defends this position a little more heavily than he would otherwise just given that his teammate is in the running for this championship and there are big points on offer tonight we have a very large strength of field 4085 I rating the average I rating between all of our competitors tonight which is very strong for uh, a Monday night we probably usually see around 3500 and of course that means that the points are bigger and better and Sam Blacklock at the moment is in position to take home the cake. I believe there are 285 points on offer for first tonight. So that's going to put a big, big dint in everyone's hopes to uh, winning this championship. And we can see Wayne Burke very, and Forzan El Nabi almost collects what a Dane Warren there and just actually having to run wide and stay on the brakes a little longer so they can actually make the corner. Very good job not to uh, cause any contact there. But Dane Warren also didn't get the best exit as they came out of the first chicane. And he's dropped quite a bit of that gap. And uh, Jake Burton's picked up the pace massively as well. He's caught right up to Blacklock. So we will see if these guys decide to fight. I hope for our sake that they do get to because that's going to be a good fight. And uh, I'm sure that Sam will uh, be feeling a little more in his chest knowing that uh, he's got this championship in a pretty good position right now and he'll want uh, to do anything that he can to make sure that he's maximizing the potential of that and Jake Burton at the same time I mean he doesn't race this uh, series full-time and may just want to go for the glory and the champagne so we'll have to see if these guys do decide to fight it out but um, just checking up on the uh, guys back in the pack now it is a little spread out there which is why we haven't been covering it so much for the uh, second portion of this race there is a little bit of a group forming with Cooper Webster Brady Myers Thomas Hins and Chris Coxhead but still a few laps I think before um, anything's really going to eventuate from that and everyone else uh, just pretty spread out seen a few different strategies from a few drivers and uh just noticed as well that i think michael tally is still running uh he's actually he's actually just pitted on the last lap round so um but he did extend his fuel window quite a lot longer than most people which is not surprising we have seen him do that several times throughout the many seasons that michael has been competing in the uh, high racing Supercars official series so he now finds himself in a 10th position having started from 15th so he'll uh, try and work himself up to Brett Loxton a little bit of a gap up to there and it will be hard to do without much of a draft but uh, he'll persevere nonetheless but we do take you back to the closest cars on track which are the four up in front Sam Blacklock still leads Jake Burton Dane Warren and Forzan El Nabi and uh got about six and a half laps left of racing to go and it does feel like it's uh, all starting to brew up the front here yeah absolutely i do i want to also want to point out that ryan o'sullivan and josh mongleton are actually quicker than forza and nabi and a couple of guys at the front there so if their pace can continue they might actually be able to catch up and eventually turn us into about a six car battle for the lead yeah that's very true they do have a little bit of a gap to recuperate but they are chipping out a chipping away at it bit by bit these last few laps i uh, think they're probably going to need about four tenths of a second a lap as it stands but uh we see dane warren there just running a very different line as he came through the exit of ascari compared to jake burton and uh that's because he got very taily just clipped the grass a little bit and that rotated the rear of the car much more toward the inside of the wall than he would have wanted and dane warren now just starting to blink a little bit as well Maybe a bit of a little connection issue there for Dane as uh, 
we have seen a couple of times previously, I believe once he disconnected not 50 metres after crossing the line. So he'll have to hope that that's able to, ha to hang on for him. But it's still TTR 1 and 2 at the front of this little battle pack. And Dane seems to just fall away and then come back and fall away and then come back. I feel like he really needs to uh, focus his efforts to just maintaining that very small gap that he has to burn all the way throughout the lap and setting himself up for a good run at Calabrolica and uh, maybe even try do what uh, Burton pulled on him a few laps prior. Yeah, absolutely. And getting closer and closer to the scene, there's only a handful of laps and have just really got to be patient. And it'll be interesting to see who actually wins this, especially if Sullivan Sullivan and Mugger can get into this because it could be anyone's guess as to who's going to make the move at what corner and it's probably going to happen at turn one but anything's going to be possible when we've seen stranger things happen yeah well all you have to do is uh go on to the iRacing esports network uh hit that subscribe button and then go back a few videos to last week's last week's race at uh, the daytona international road course where we saw the top three cars separated by less than a tenth of a second and uh we were having a bit of a chat in our discord while we were commentating that race we couldn't pick who was going to win it and uh none of us sure did so that was very entertaining and with the cars as close as they are now it does feel very reminiscent of those moments you know dane could easily go for a massive draft in these last few laps and pull a move on both of them. Forza and El Nabi could have just been, you know, sitting there hanging out for the last few laps and saving all of his energy for the last two to pull something magical together, although he's going to have to make up a little bit of ground. And uh, Jake Burton is now bump drafting his teammate, but Dane Warren now goes for the move. Is he going to get both of them? I think Sam's going to have to give the room to avoid an accident. And there's a bit of a touch, and Dane's going to have to go wide there. Luckily for him, he hasn't lost too much ground. Unfortunately, he does have to give a position to Forza and Nabi, but he hasn't fallen off this train. He hasn't had a massive spin, so he can still recuperate that time and those positions. But he does only have a small period of time to do it. And in the meantime, Josh Muggleton and Rhino Sullivan just behind them are very close as well. And uh, they'll be probably aiming not to fight too much. They have been exploring that gap back as we were saying and the uh, last lap around was pretty much dead even between the top five cars there so um, they'll have to do a little more work to get themselves on the end of this train but uh, Dane Warren with a very unfortunate little uh, incident there I mean that's, that's racing down into turn one at Monza isn't it it's, it's very difficult to get through there by yourself let alone with another car next to you and Sam Blacklock obviously very eager to retain that position as it's going to do massively great things for him in terms of his championship. So Dane now with a one second gap to the lead still only. So with that kind of figure, I mean, it, it really is anyone's race at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And just talking about that fresh cane as well, it's with limited lock on these cars, it's extremely hard to go side by side and not make contact. It's very common to see it, but yeah, really unfortunate for them, but I'm sure he'll be able to recuperate himself and get back up to that front of the field. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting point you've made about the little lock. I remember years ago watching uh, a video of Mark Winterbottom trying to go around a roundabout in a V8 supercar. I think he only had to uh, reverse and, and have a, you know, he had to make about a 72 point turn to make that work. As is the case with uh, a lot of racing cars, they only like going around corners quickly and uh, not particularly slowly or at too great an angle. So he's gonna have to rethink his approach for any future moves into turn one and uh, hope that he gets a little more room given to him next time or uh, has the opportunity to take a different line through there and make something else work. We are now just coming through the second Lesmo, or the first Lesmo, pardon me. And this second Lesmo is such a deceptive corner. You really want to take so much speed through there. And I mean, you still do, you're still going through there at about 130, 140 kilometers an hour. But the exit that you get down the, uh, down the Seraglio Strait is uh, just so critical for your run down to Ascari, that uh, it's very easy to 
either take a little too much of that inside curb or take way too much of the outside curb and run on the grass there. Yeah, absolutely. And when you're pushing on the limit like these guys are, it's very, very easy to do. So you've just got to kind of be a little bit careful not to get too much, drop the wheel off too much, or it could end in disaster. And you don't really want to spin the wheels up either as you don't want to wear them out and heat them up too much. Yes, and they've only got a couple of, left, of laps left on these tyres. So as we come over the line now, there are just three laps to go. About 16 and a half kilometres of racing left for you at Autodromo Nazionale Monza. And currently, Sam Blacklock is the man with everything to lose out in the front of this four-car train with Jake Burton, Forzan El Nabi and Dane Warren tucked in very closely behind all of them, separated by just 1.044 seconds right now. And uh, they've changed. I don't know how many lead changes there have been. There's been quite a few, but it has remained fairly stagnant the last few laps. And I have noticed that uh, Jake Burton, he doesn't really seem to have much of an intention of passing Sam Blacklock right now because I mean in my opinion he's had several chances to do so and uh, coupled with the evidence that I have seen him bump drafting his teammate all the way down that main straight uh, would suggest to me that he's going to hold station at least until the very very last lap where he may try something hopefully uh, for, for Sam a low risk move but uh, definitely seems like those two guys are very happy sitting out where they are right now. Forzan El Nabi just showing himself in the mirror of Burton saying, just reminding me, mate, I have been sitting here for the last uh, six or seven laps and uh, I am prepared to do something should the opportunity arise. And just trying to force Jake into that opportunity opening up for him. But Jake Burton holding strong and doing a good job of rear gunning for his teammate there. But... Uh, Come into the parabolic and now another one of those deceptively slow corners. That's how most of the corners at Monza go take so much speed down these straights that you get to the corner and you forget how slow you really need to go by the time you meet that first apex. And Jake Burton having a look now, maybe just trying to cover off that look from Forzan behind and just tucks back in again doing a fantastic job just securing that spot for his teammate just up ahead and i'm surprised that dane warren hasn't kind of pushed forward and made a bit of a move although it does seem like the tires have fallen off quite dramatically uh fastest lap for these guys looking in the low 50s uh, towards the beginning of this race and they're now doing 51 fives 51 eights 51 sixes but interestingly, the two cars behind, Fawzan El Nabi and Dane Warren, are actually faster than Jake Burton and Sam Blacklock right now, so it is not over. But Dane applying a bit of pressure to Fawzan and giving him a hurry up. Fawzan knows that uh, Dane kind of has that speed at the moment, and I wonder if he'll uh, battle it out as they uh, decide to go when they when they probably change positions or if he's going to let it go pretty easily. Yeah, I'm not sure what his plan's going to be, but we'll kind of have to wait and see. But those two at the front are starting to look very, very eager to make moves and that sort of stuff. Dane's actually patiently waiting there, which is really interesting as it runs quite wide. But we'll see what happens. Is he going to come across the line this time, buying it the two laps to go as Forzan once again poking his nose out just to show it to Burton and try and get him to possibly make a mistake. But... Burton's a very, very good racer, and that's usually a difficult thing to do to him. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Jake Burton, of course, has some extra racing experience racing in the Toyota A86 or GT86 series uh, in Australia this year after winning the Australian Driver Search competition. So he's, uh, I actually went down to Phillip Island and saw him race. He was deep in uh, a very, very eager pack of little 86s there very close very hard racing and uh i'm sure that that has strengthened his skills throughout the year and right now still doing a very good job and now just giving his teammate a little bit of breathing room and that could open him up to a bit of a move but 
I mean, again, that's going to slow them down. Dane Warren's going very deep into the second chicane. He's going to have to put the move on Forzan El Nabi. Luckily, he just managed to scrub off enough speed before he made contact with the rear quarter of the Trick Sim Sports car there. But now that has opened up a really nice gap for the two TTR cars ahead. And we've only got one and a half laps to go. So they really only have a couple more opportunities to make anything work. And you can see El Nabi and Dane just using as much road as they possibly can as they come out of the second Lesmo there to try and recuperate the time that they lost from that uh, little, uh, not so much a miscommunication, but just a bit of an awkward kind of moment there. And Dane bumping Forzan as they come into Ascari. And now the TTR cars up ahead, they've got a really nice gap. It's only 0.8 of a second, but last time, well, last time round it was 0.2 of a second. So six tenths of a lap, uh, six tenths they've lost on this lap, pardon me, which is very critical. They will regain a lot of that as they come down the straight here. But now we will see, will Burton go for the glory? Does he want to take the win? Sam Blacklock is defending. Jake Burton has a run, but he's pushing his teammate down the front straight and it doesn't look like he's going to do anything unless it's the very last minute but he puts on the brakes a little bit early and uh decides not to do anything and Forzan El Nabi's coming in very hot gives a little bit of a bump to Jake Burton as he was slowing down and a bit of bit of a cheeky strategy there and Ryan O'Sullivan went for a move as well on uh on pardon me Josh Muggleton tried to go around the outside wasn't able to make it work though had to cut to the inside of the course and Jake Burton, a little bit cheeky, uh, slowing up so much into turn one, catching Forzan El Nabi out by surprise. Um, but Jake Burton is fully entitled to do that. He has uh, the corner and he can choose to do into turn one as he likes, so long as he uh, doesn't stop there. And now Dane Warren is going to have to try and make a move work on Forzan El Nabi. Forzan can keep himself in third right now that may just be enough to keep his championship hopes alive. But right now, Sam Blacklock is the man out in front. He's only got one, two, three, four corners to go before the end of this race. And really, the most critical one is this, the Ascari chicane. He's made it through there, unscathed so far. No, been on the exit? No. So he's only got one corner to go before he can say that he won the iRacing V8 Supercars official race at Monza. But Dane Warren's not going to settle for anything less than third, it looks like, because he does have a bit of a look. He's going to have to get a very good run coming out of the final corner. The Parabolica doesn't look like he's able to do so. But Sam Blacklock, after playing it right in the pits, has done everything that he can to keep himself ahead. And he takes out the iRacing V8 Supercars official race here at Autodromo Nazionale Monza. He was followed closely by Jake Burton, Forzan El Nabi, Dane Warren, Muggleton managed to come home for fifth position and Ryan O'Sullivan will have to settle for sixth. So still have a few cars obviously coming over the line, which we will get to shortly. Uh, Michael Taliancic picking up another spot and uh, I think Sharp, Greg Sharp having a little bit of a battle and Mitchell McLeod and Steve Jansen, their battle's not done. McLeod going for the outside line which gives them some nice speed as they come out of the exit there and Steve Jansen just getting a little bit crossed up midway through the Parabolica so they come home for 15th and 16th respectively. Martin Silvassi over the line as is Greg Sharp who uh, managed to pick up a spot on that last lap as well but um, a very entertaining race here at Monza tonight. Quite a few changes for the lead and uh, all of the top four tonight finished within 1.1 seconds of each other which is very impressive and uh, as we saw there was a bit of a disparity in qualifying but as you mentioned in the pre-race camp that draft really kept everyone together nicely throughout that race yeah absolutely it all came down to a strategy call in the end which paid off for the guys at trans tasman racing with them getting a one-two finish and black clock walking away the hefty amount of points towards championship as well so it's going to be very, very interesting heading into the next two rounds at Spa and I can't quite and Phillip Island for what is going to be actually some quite long, lengthy races as well. So it's going to be all on in those last two rounds, and I'm not 
and I can't wait for it. Yeah, absolutely. There is going to uh, be a lot of endurance factor in those last two rounds. I think we've got something like 46 laps at, uh, at Phillip Island for the last round and 28 laps uh, at Spa next week, which should take us well over the hour mark. But as for tonight's race, we will take you through our final order. Sam Blacklock retaining his championship lead and extending it even further with a win here at Circuit Monza. Jake Burton, his teammate, followed closely behind just 0.357 seconds, came in second place. And uh, Forzan El Nabi doing a good job retaining third throughout that entire race. Josh, uh, pardon me, Dane Warren came home in fourth. Josh Muggleton, after finding himself in no, lands, no man's land for a while, picked up a partner in Ryan O'Sullivan and uh, managed to hold him off and picked up top five for himself. And Sally ended up in sixth position. Ross Rizzo came home in seventh, making his way up. Wayne Burke had a bit of an atrocious race, a slowdown early on and a uh, couple of incidents later throughout the race, meaning he came home in position number eight, down from four. Michael Taliancic using a bit of strategy to get himself up into ninth from 15th and Brett Loxton rounded out your top 10. In 11th, we have Brady Myers, followed by Thomas Hins, who started in 22nd, made up 10 positions to finish in 12th. So a good drive by Hinsey there. 13th, we'll go to Chris Cox, followed by Kobe Cooper Webster in 14th. Mitchell McLeod will round out the top 15 in, after starting in 25th, all the way at the back of the field. 16th, we'll go to Steve Janssen, followed by Martin Silvassi in 17th. 18th, we'll go to Agree Sharp with David Miller in 19th. And rounding out the top 20 will be David Kinman. Yes, and then Jordan Ross uh, having a very poor performance compared to last time we saw him out. He ended up in 21st. Emily Jones uh, didn't see much of her tonight, unfortunately. She ended up in 22nd, but I'm sure she'll be back for another race and get a little more TV time. Corey Preston as well didn't see a lot of Corey throughout this race. Actually uh, started 10th and ended up 23rd, so must have had a, some unfortunately throughout that one. And uh, then our non-finishers, Sam Sutton and Thomas McMillan. But uh, the action has ended tonight, but it has not finished. Um, we have some events coming up on V8s Online Wednesday and the iRacing Esports Network. In fact, Wednesday night on the iRacing Esports Network, we have the V8s Online Porsche Super Cup at Laguna Seca, which is going to be a fantastic uh race i know i'll be heavily involved in that at friday we have the australian online supercar championship at spa for 650 kilometers always fantastic watching these v8s in those long enduros very entertaining indeed then on sunday we have the oceanic endurance championship at monza with uh prototypes and gt cars that is another one to definitely keep an eye out on for and on sunday as well we have uh, the major series doing the Pocono 500. And of course, that can all be found on v Online and the iRacing Esports Network. And just a reminder to all you guys out there, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And if you thought that this race was pretty good and uh, you'd like to watch a couple more, don't forget to smash that like button as well because it really does help us all in the long run and it helps out the sim racing community and helps us all grow together as one. And uh, don't forget as well to tune in next Monday on the iRacing Esports Network for the iRacing official V8 Supercar Series at Spa Francorchamps, where we will have 28 laps of maximum attack through the Belgian hills. But from me tonight and from Cameron Dance and Jay Kennedy on the buttons, we thank you so much for watching. You have a good night and we'll see you next time. Last year, I was sitting at a desk as a sales manager. And now, I'm official McLaren F1 simulated test driver.
this opportunity is huge, huge. Done six laps. Let's go race. a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network.